Hey, Archery Talk, this is Lucas, and today I'm talking to Cade Tropila from PSE, and he's going to help me decide kind of what PSE bow I should be testing this year as part of Archery Talk's 2022 hunting bow shootout. Um, Cade, tell me what's new for PSE this year. Ah, so I got a whole, uh, whole bunch of different things. Uh, we just released the uh, Evo XF, our high-end aluminum bows, coming in a 30-inch axle axle and a 33 um paving the way the levitate uh one bow of the year is uh our carbon bow it also came with the new uh e2 and s2 cams on there so second generation of the evolved cams is definitely a huge step for us in the market a little bit more of an aggressive cam um and stores a lot of energy so a big thing for us this year has been the the carbon levitate and then our aluminum bows with the new cams on there and so, so the the cam, I guess the the cams are largely similar to the evolves we've kind of shot the last few years and been comfortable with. So, what what are what are our main kind of points of of difference between the the old and the new? Um, the uh, draw force curve is going to be a little uh, bigger, so you're going to just be able to store more energy, or the cam store some more energy. Um, so it's going they're just going to be faster. They're anywhere from about six to ten feet uh, per second faster at each draw length comparatively to the ec and the se which were the first generation of the evolve cams so sort of far like from a shooter perspective maybe you'd you'd, you'd uh like a, a more of like a more of an early more more like more power early required and, and, and then a big dip into the into the valley is that what i should expect uh yes yeah, so you're just gonna when you draw and it's gonna when you get that initial draw and then you normally feel the valley and it roll over that initial draw is just going to be longer and then comes into the back just like the evolve or the original evolved did so you're just pulling more energy for a little bit longer of a period yeah the speed is never free so it's got to come you, you have to earn it somewhere uh, you, you do so yeah definitely with the shorter draw length individuals um these cams are going to generate more speed and more uh energy for you guys and what what kind of draw length ranges are we looking at on the new bows so on the on the carbon levitate the s2 cam is 25 to 29 and then on the bigger cam the e2 cam is 27 and a half to 31 and a half oh. and then for people that want to shoot you know not necessarily shoot a carbon bow but still like an aluminum bow and high end the xf30 with the big cam is 27 and a half to 31 and a half very similar to that carbon levitate and then the smaller cam, same thing, 25 to 29. And then for the 33 on the small cam is 26 to 30. So even if you like a, a larger axle axle, you still we still offered the, uh, you can get down to a shorter draw length. And then the big cam, it's kind of nice because it goes 28 and a half to 32 and a half. So the people with like a 32 inch draw length sometimes are left out on the on a limb because a lot of companies don't have a bow that goes to 32 so this bow does go past 32 so it's pretty sweet that we offer that it's, it's actually interesting for for me because i'm 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 a 30 inch a 30 inch draw guy and so that, that small cam on that bow actually is interesting because you get to take full advantage of the uh you know of the of, of, of all the all that cam has to offer in that, in that spot yep so and so, so what is uh, I guess what's the dealer reaction been to the lineup this year? Like, which uh, what what are they what are they what are they trying to bring in the most of to sell to their customers? Man, it's it seems like that carbon levitate is really because uh, it's a very shootable bow too. So in, in a lot of carbon bows in years past, you know, not knocking on ourselves or other companies, but you know, there's been different things so like hand shock or the, you know, adding more weight to the bow because it does tend to want to move because it's so light. But with this bow it seems like all across the board that it just checks every box and it seems like we just can't build enough of them they're just selling like hotcakes to all the dealers all across the nation too from the east to the west it's a good problem to have it is it is i'm not complaining about it so production might be you know telling us to slow down a little bit but it's good that's good i guess there's i guess the last few couple of years have been tough for everybody in the industry it feels like just with kind of like a just getting enough enough raw materials in to make bows and to get them shipped out is there have, have you guys kind of are, are mostly on 100 percent on track now are you still there's still some delays with with issues like that uh there's definitely still some delay issues just with the ports and having enough drivers to, and truckers to truck things in for any company or whatever it is if it's not in this industry but luckily when the first like the pandemic first hit um our buyers were pretty good at forecasting ahead um so we 
we came we've had some hiccups here and there and it's usually on the smaller things like a like a screw or something like that so but luck thankfully we've been pretty fortunate to have everything come along as needed that's good it's been a real drain on the on the industry well pretty much every industry really there's been you, yes. rely on, you don't you just don't the consumer like average guy like me doesn't think about it oh how can a screw hold up production of a bow well you mean you need you need you need to get the screws made and get them get those machines because you're not you're not machining screws in house generally speaking so you're going to get those done from a, from some other some other place and if they don't have the raw materials and whatever to get them done it kind of just it just throws a wrench into everything yeah 100 percent so I guess with, with all that in mind with the, with the new lineup, what would you think uh, the bow I should be testing this year from PSC to be part of the kind of the 2022 Archery Talk hunting bow shoot? Guide? So um, let me ask you. So if you if you were to take a bow out hunting, what style of hunting do you do per se? So like, do you sit in like a tree? Like if you're going out hunting, are you sitting in a tree stand? Do you more so in a ground blind? Um, uh, so it kind of that I would say has a lot to do with it because myself i like a longer axle by axle bow um but i have had the experience of where i'm sitting in a ground blind or something and you're in more tighter tighter quarters like a 30 inch axle by axle bow might be might suit you better as opposed to the 33. um so i i like to generate or base it off of like the hunting styles and um you know what what may be your furthest shot and things of that nature but i really think that either that new xf30 or the 33 um is is it going to be a sweet shooting and a really good hunting bow for for yourself or anyone in the industry yeah primarily i'm, I'm tree stand just because where we are I'm, I'm in ontario canada we're rich with uh rich with forest and trees up here uh and so that's kind of mostly where i where i will hunt from is up in the climber or something like that um but yeah that the 30 again the 33 sounds like with especially with that how that the draw link works on that smaller cam sounds uh sounds just about perfect yeah so that that yeah the xf30 with that we call it the st cam yeah going 26 to 30 and you being 29 or or 30 you'd be smoking in it um so i that would be a, that would be a great shooting bow for you um definitely for any caliber of animals you'd, you'd be going after sure would get the job done well, perfect. Uh, Kate, I do appreciate all your help with this. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about PSE's lineup or anything like that this year, but I think we're off uh, on a good on a good note, and I'm kind of looking forward to uh, to getting the package from the Brig Brown truck in the next uh, little while. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I'm not sure uh, if folks know or yourself, but we did update the charcoal color, our solid color for our bows is charcoal. We've had charcoal in the year past, and it was a little non-textured and a little shiny. Um, We've moved away from that, developed a new charcoal color that's uh, flatter, has some texture in it, doesn't shine as much. Um, uh, so I, I'm not sure what color or camo pattern you like your bow in, but the charcoal color bow is, can or solid color is pretty sweet. That's good, yes. Uh, solid color bows are generally what I, my preference is as well. So if you have the, one of those on hand, I'm great, but ultimately I'm happy to shoot whatever you guys have, have in the shop that, you, <laughs> that you'd like to get on camera a little bit. I'm pretty easy. Sweet, yeah. So. Um, yeah, we can definitely do that. And then, uh, yeah, you right-handed, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, I'm a right Sweet. right-handed. So I'm. Uh, cool. it's a, I would I I would feel bad for anyone in doing what I do who's a lefty trying to wait for everything to come in. Lefties lefties always have it tough. Oh yeah, that would yeah. Wrong-handed people in the in this industry is not not seated them well. It's rough, man. Anyway, but again, Kate, thank you so much for your time today. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, and uh, look forward to working together in the future.